Greetings, and welcome to Freedom Quest. There's been a tremendous pushback lately on the heretical doctrine of Calvinism. People are coming out of the woodwork, declaring how they were set free from the shackles of Calvinism. New websites and YouTube channels are popping up daily. The reality of Calvinism being a cult is finally seeing the light of day. Calvinism is being exposed for the blasphemy that it is. But the Calvinists are not taking this uprising, laying down. No, now they're fighting back. Now they're putting the gloves on. Good, because we're taking the gloves off. We are ready to rumble. Calvinism has been flying under the radar for way too long. It's time for a little spiritual warfare. Just remember, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. The Calvinists themselves are not our enemy. The heresy of Calvinism is. So go after the doctrine, not its victims. If you have to fight an actual person, go after the pastor, not the ignorant congregants. Go after the deceiver, not the deceived. The enemy is their doctrine of so-called divine sovereignty. The enemy is their doctrine of so-called total depravity. The enemy is their doctrine in general. So how do the Calvinists treat their detractors? How do the Calvinists classify anyone who disagrees with them? It's actually quite humorous, but also rather pathetic. In general, behind closed doors, or even on their YouTube channels, they tend to say childish things like, If you don't believe in the God of the Bible, and these people don't, um, if, if, if you're offended by the God of the Bible, and they are, so are you truly contemplating God if you do not have a relationship with him? Huh? Vast majority of Christians have no way of understanding what's being said. So, is it getting over that mountaintop that now I can see God and 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 getting your mind to go, okay, um, God has revealed His attributes to us, and we're to glorify Him for His omniscience and His omnipresence and and His immutability and and but they're all the same thing. And I've just got to get to the point where in my mind that. Because I, I want to think like God, and, and God doesn't distinguish, and so, so uh, is is this what contemplation is? You know, I've, some of these guys go, oh, there it is again, go swim the Tiber thing, as they, they just, just try to dismiss it. And not think about what's actually being said here. Does, can you actually, in a Christian fashion, contemplate God while holding to a false gospel? No, Jimmy Bob, you cannot. But in your twisted Calvinistic world, all non-Calvinists believe a false gospel. No, actually, James, I don't hate the Bible, nor do I hate the God of the Bible. I hate false doctrine. I hate your capricious God of Calvinism. I hate how you misrepresent the character of my Heavenly Father. But Calvinism not only distorts the character of God, they also smear the character of mankind. In Calvinism, God is mean, and people are stupid. In Calvinism, they promote false doctrines like divine sovereignty. Their erroneous description of God, called divine sovereignty, makes God out to be a cruel dictator. They insist that the God of Calvinism is so utterly sovereign, that he is literally the author and orchestrator of evil. In reality, the Bible does teach that God is totally sovereign. And in his complete and total sovereignty, he gave mankind free will. In other words, God gave mankind the ability and freedom to make their own choices. Choose obedience and holiness, and you will be blessed. Choose disobedience and rebellion, and you will experience God's wrath. But God, in his immeasurable grace and mercy, predestined a plan of salvation from the beginning of time. Knowing that the gift of free will would lead to genuine love, and or the depravity of rebellion, God decreed that he would come down in the form of a man, and pay for our redemption, on the cross. That is true love. There is no greater love, than when one lays down their life, for a friend. Yes the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God, is eternal life, through faith in Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes on him, shall not perish, but have everlasting life. That's the gospel, the good news. Saved by grace, through faith. But God is a God of love, and a God of justice. That's why there is both a heaven, and a hell. 
embrace God's offer of salvation, redemption, and adoption, and heaven becomes your eternal home. Reject God's offer, and your destination is not so pleasant. Not so pleasant at all. But Calvinism flipped the gospel on its head. God is not a God of love, he is a God of capricious evil. In Calvinism, God is the root of all evil. The God of Calvinism is not only the root of all evil, he demands evil. He is the actual cause of all wars, death, and murder. He not only allows rape and abortion, he demands it. And because he arbitrarily kills and condemns, he also orchestrates the death and condemnation of children. The Calvinists call it, infant damnation. So in Calvinism, their God forces someone to rape a child, then forces the child to have an abortion, then sends the rapist, the victim, and the aborted baby, to hell. But why? Why do the Calvinists claim that God would commit and condone such heinous acts of evil? For his glory. I kid you not. That is what they teach. I'm sorry my friend, that is not the God of the Bible. The God of the Bible loves his children so much, that he paid their death penalty on the cross. The God of Calvinism, sounds suspiciously like the God of this world, Satan. Satan is glorified by death. Not God. The God of the Bible is the creator of life. The God of the Bible is a God of love, and truth. Satan is a false God of hate and deception. The scriptures teach that God has no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but rather that they repent. In Calvinism, God not only has pleasure in the death of the wicked, but also in the death of children. But Calvinism not only insults the holiness of God, they insult the intelligence of man. That's their doctrine of total depravity. In Calvinism, mankind is so utterly depraved and stupid, that we cannot understand the gospel. We cannot interpret the truth of John 3.16. I'm sorry, but you might be that stupid, but the first time I heard the gospel, I understood that I was a sinner, in need of a savior. Maybe some people are that stupid. But in most cases it's not stupidity, it's rebellion. Most people reject the offer of salvation, because they prefer their sin. The light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. He came to his own, but his own did not receive him. But as many as did receive him, to them he gave the right, to become children of God. To those, who believe in his name. In God's complete and total sovereignty, he gave his children the right, to accept his offer of salvation, by simply believing in his divine and holy name. But not in Calvinism, people are just too stupid to read. Too stupid to understand the plan. So in Calvinism, God created all people to be reprobates. The God of Calvinism is not too bright, and somehow screwed up the creation process, and created every human being, broken, blind, and stupid. Which in itself is rather odd, since the scriptures teach, that we were actually created, in God's image. But the God of Calvinism, didn't create humans, he created zombies. Deaf, dumb, and blind zombies. Then he decided to force some of them to love him. So he turns some of the zombies, into robots and he forces the robots to come and serve him in heaven, and sends the zombies to hell. Holy cow bro, can this get any weirder? Sure thing my friend, just pick up any book on John Calvin's theology, and they'll take you down a rabbit hole so deep, you'll never get out. It's the bottomless pit, of Calvinism. The depths of their depravity and deception, knows no bounds. I think most Calvinists are not rooted in scripture, but in the pride of their own intellect. They started their life journey graced with a decent IQ, but quickly became enamored with their own self-perceived intellectual prowess. Then unfortunately, in some form or fashion, they were exposed to Calvinism. And the Calvinists always present their theology, as Christianity, for intellectuals. And now, to protect their pride, they must use their towering intellect, to defend Calvinism, to the death. Even when their doctrine makes no sense whatsoever. Even when their doctrine, literally denies the holiness of God. Even when their doctrine, teaches that God, is the root of all evil. Not the fallen nature of mankind. Not Satan. No, God. God, is the root of all evil. That is the very definition of blasphemy. That is the very definition, of Calvinism. Calvinism is not the high road. It's not even the low road. It is a sewer. 
Pasua, from hell. So what is one to do? Well for starters, don't touch the heresy of Calvinism with a 10-foot pole. Stay as far from their blasphemy as you can get. But study the scriptures, to show yourself a workman who needs not be ashamed, rightly dissecting the word of God. Then preach the truth, from the rooftops. And when you are ready to join the army, put on the full armor of God, and join the battle. Not to defeat the Calvinist, but to rescue that poor sheep, who has fallen into the pit, of Calvinism. Good hunting my friend. Good hunting.